Hi right, guys, this is part three of the MP3 player specific part of my uh, DS Pick project, GPS and MP3 player. In the last video, I made a dead bug board to reproduce this VS1003 MP3 decoder module. Processing the last video in iMovie to normalize the two different audio levels also messed up the video resolution, so I've included some high res photos in this video. For a bit more assurance about the quality of the solder connections to the LQFP chip, I decided to try touching some of them up with this silver conductive pen. I've never used one of these before, so I tried some tests on some rubbish surfaces before using it on the project. It turns out the mixture isn't conductive straight away until it cures when it does become very conductive. I'm bridging the connections here just to make sure my circuit's alright using a strand of solder. Having left it set up overnight, in the morning the LED was lit. I'm planning on potting this assembly, starting with a thin layer of superglue to make sure it's viscous enough to get right down into the legs. I forgot to mention in the last video that I've saved two pins by moving the two SD card switches over to the shift register that takes the parallel joystick input. Furthermore, I'm quite sure I can combine the two chip select signals for both halves of the LCD into one pin with an extra inverter buffer. Having freed up RB3, I should be able to move B15 over to it and have another spare pin. This is the best trace I got soldered to the silver conductive pen. You're supposed to be able to solder to it under 350 degrees, but I think you'd have to be pretty desperate to repair a board that way. Starting on a file browser for the MP3 player that uses no RAM. Printing the next seven file names from a variable starting position, the program doesn't actually know what it previously wrote. This version of Microchip's memory disk file system only supports 8.3 file names, but I can update that later. Or it might be easy enough to look into the ID3 tags of the MP3 file and pull out the information that I need. Now I've got mouse pointer control. You can see that the movement is stuttery and that's because for every frame, every file on the screen is reprinted and that's a lot of scratching around on the SD card. These two chips arrived today, they were part of my backup plan in case the dead bug module didn't work. Actually wrapped up in plastic on a bit of foam popcorn. One of them looks ravaged from the trip, I'm not sure if I'd save that one anyway. Any decent file browser needs a scroll bar. And that's why I present to you the niche video segment how to write a scroll bar in 60 seconds. Let's say we have 14 files and we divide that by the seven lines we can print to the screen. That equals two screen pages that it takes to print all 14 files. Divide the 62 pixel vertical range by the two pages and we know to draw a 31 pixel high moving segment. Here's our 31 pixel high moving segment that can move across a 62 pixel range. Subtract the height of the moving segment from the total height and we're left with the range of motion that we can actually move the moving segment. Divide the upper limit of that range by the total number of files and we're left with a value that represents the number of pixels to move the segment for every file. The rest will vary depending on your implementation. Generally multiply that number by the currently selected file to get the position to draw your segment. For this example file number 7 was currently selected. As I said, this could vary. Because my browser can print seven files and the seventh file is always selected, I had to subtract seven from the file count and also the currently selected file number. This segment shows that the mouse movement is now much smoother. I borrowed a trick from the GPS program and I'm printing the file names to an image. This way I only have to read from the SD card while the screen is scrolling. Any other time I can just redraw the previously printed list of files. A button shield exists. That's right, not much else to it. A button and a header connector. That reminds me I've got to add more buttons. And a QFH GPS antenna like this one. 
only this time with an SMA connector so it's removable. I'm still waiting for these from eBay but I'm building another GPS around a U-Blocks GPS module. One of the cheaper variety this time.